Hello everyone, Fisgus here. Welcome to another tutorial. In this one we will go over the ramp start process, how to get the F-16 running and ready for the mission. The process I will demonstrate here is not accurate to what it's supposed to be in real life. I do not claim that this flow is the most realistic, accurate or fastest. There are other videos about ramp starting that are more like that. The way I ramp start the F-16 is based on my own experience with the simulator and is the way I feel comfortable doing it. I find that it is very effective and gets all the systems ready for use. This process is done in a way that is relevant in a multiplayer setting and trying to follow the SOPs of the group I'm with, 7-2 Squadron. Also this tutorial is made with the assumption that you configured and saved your data cartridge. When loading into the aircraft, I will not go over the process of checking if all the switches are in their correct position because they are always in the same position for that block when you load into the aircraft. I will also not do the lights and warnings checks for the same reason, they always work. I will perform some tests and checks after engine start. Let's get into it. When you first load into the aircraft, I suggest closing the canopy. It isn't mandatory to do this at this point, but if there are other aircraft around you, it can get very noisy and distracting. It is very important to note that you should either close the canopy before the engine start process or after it's completed. If you close the canopy while the JFS is running, it will shut off and you will have to request a JFS refill. So again, close the canopy now or wait to do it after the engine start process is finished. Look towards the left of the cockpit. On the canopy bow, you will see the canopy switch. Right click and hold on that switch until the canopy is completely closed. Alternatively, the default key to close the canopy is Alt W. After that, click on the canopy latch to lock the canopy. If you have the pilot's body present, I recommend hiding it during the ramp start process, as it can get in the way of some switches. You can do this by pressing Alt C followed by P. Now let's start up the battery. Still on the left hand side of the cockpit, just behind the throttle, you have the electrical panel and the battery power switch. Left click it twice. Next, we're going to set up the backup radio. Put the left knob in the both position, then increase the volume of COM1 and COM2. After that, tune into the backup channel briefed by your flight lead. I will go to channel 1 and continue the startup process while I wait for my lead to do the backup check with the flight. On the fuel panel, set engine feed to norm. With electrical power enabled, we can switch on the parking brake. This is not required while having the chocks on the wheels, but I prefer having it switched on as an added step of safety, especially after we request the chocks to be removed later. Now look towards the right of the cockpit. Underneath the armrest, there is the air source knob. Left click on it once to set it to norm. You can still start up your engine while having the air source set to off but you will very likely burn out your avionics. Turn on the oxygen to your pilot by left clicking on the green knob, setting it to on. Without oxygen enabled, your pilot will experience hypoxia at higher altitudes. Come back to the left of the cockpit. On the engine and jet start control panel, you will see the jet fuel starter switch, JFS. To start the engine, right click on it to set it to start to. After you have done that, reference the RPM indicator on the instruments panel. Once the needle has stabilized at 25%, again look to the left of the cockpit at your throttle. You now have to press this lever to put the throttle past the idle detent position and introduce fuel into the engine. You can do it either by left clicking on the lever or by pressing Alt-I on your keyboard.
Now that the engine has started up with no issues, we can start turning on avionics. On the avionics panel, switch on all the switches except for the map switch, which is not implemented. Left click once on the EGI knob to set it to align norm. Stored heading is not implemented in BMS. I will not switch on mids at this point, I will do it a little later. On the sensor power panel, set radar altimeter to standby, turn on the FCR, and power on the right and left cheek hard points. This will provide power to the TGP and the HTS pod if you have them loaded on the aircraft. You will notice that in the pilot fault list display, there will be a few faults listed. This is normal, let's start clearing them up. Towards the back left of the cockpit, on the flight control panel, reset the FLCS by left clicking on this switch. After that, look at one of your MFDs, select the test page, and press this OSB to clear all the errors. Then come back to the flight control panel and start up the FLCS built-in test by left clicking on this switch. Go back to an MFD and select the DTE page. If it's not on the shortlisted options, like the test and FCR pages are currently, simply click again on a page that is already selected and then select the DTE page. Then press this OSB to load your data cartridge that you configured and saved on the 2D map. While this information is loading, go back to the left of the cockpit. On the IFF panel, set the master knob to norm. Also set the CNI knob to UFC or upfront controls. On the external lighting panel, set your anti-collision light to your number in the flight. Set your wing tail and fuselage lights as needed considering the ambient lighting. Do the same to the formation lights knob and set the master knob to norm. Keep the lights on steady, switch them on to flash when you're ready to taxi out. Now reference the ECM panel. If you have an ECM pod loaded on the aircraft, set it to operate. And then set the transmit switch, XMIT, to the desired position. I will keep it on 1. Then press buttons 1 through 5 to enable all the programs. Keep in mind that by doing this, the pod is simply ready to be used. It is not currently transmitting. Turn on your HMCS symbology by turning this knob. This symbology can be toggled by pressing and holding DMS aft on your stick. Next, power on your radar warning receiver by pressing this power button. On the countermeasures panel, activate your chaff and flare dispensers as well as your RWR and jammer. MWS is not implemented. Select the program and mode you wish to use by turning the respective knobs. On the RWR, enable handoff and if you want the RWR to show all possible emissions or only the priority ones, then run the RWR system test. Next, activate the HUD symbology by rotating this knob. Now for some housekeeping. On the DED, set your radio channels as needed. Set your Joker Bingo fuel state by pressing list, 2, and then entering the value. Select your air-to-air -air TACAN channel if one is in use by pressing 1 on the ICP, then on the ICP rocker hit sequence, introduce the value. If you want to switch from band X-ray to Yankee, press 0 and then enter. Then activate your helmet mounted display symbology and align it. You can do this by pressing list. 0 and then RCL for HMCS. Once you're on this page, 
press sequence, then zero, then align the crosshair that's on the helmet display with the one displayed on the heads up display and press the cursor enable button on your throttle. Wait until align OK is displayed. Once it is, keep pressing zero and performing the alignments on each of the fields. Once this process is done, go back to the main DED page. If you are in multiplayer, your flight lead should provide you with the QNH for the airbase you're on. If you're in single player, you can get this value from the tower or by tuning in to the ATIS frequency, which for Gunsan Airbase is 120.22. Press COM2, then input the value, and then hit enter. Gunsan Information Hotel. Runway 36. Expect visual approach. Wind 293 degrees, 14 knots, gusts 23. Visibility 10 kilometers or more. Sky conditions, clouds, few 5,000 feet. Temperature plus 30 degrees Celsius. Altimeter. 1012 millibars. The information the aid is provided is the following the name of the airbase, the information code, which is hotel, these will cycle as the weather reports are updated throughout the day, the runway in use 36, the flying condition, visual conditions, the wind direction and speed, which is coming from 293 degrees at 14 knots with gusts of 23 knots, visibility out to 10 kilometers. The sky conditions, currently a few clouds with the lowest ones at 5,000 feet, the temperature at 30 degrees Celsius, and the information we were looking for, QNH 1012. On your altimeter, just underneath the ICP, use this knob to input the value given by the ATIS. Zero, eight, Once that's degrees, done, remember to one, set your COM2 back two, two. to your intended channel. Visible. Go through all the pages that you'll be using in the mission, make sure that they are all set up correctly, configure and power on any weapons that require it. At this point, I normally do a flight control surfaces check. Real life pilots have ground crew to help them with this check. In BMS, just go to an external view, operate all the flight control surfaces to check for correct movements, don't forget to use the rudder, and deploy the air brakes. The alignment of your aircraft should now be finished. This can be seen by the blinking align on the heads-up display. Also, you can go to your INS page by pressing list 6 and seeing ready blinking on the DED. To the right of the cockpit, set the EGI knob to nav. Also, set the mids knob to on. On one of your MFDs, go to the DTE page. If Link 16 in it required is shown, click on the Link 16 OSB. The quickest way to check if Link 16 is correctly activated is by checking your HSD page and looking for symbology of other aircraft in the area. You are now ready to taxi. Enable your nose wheel steering by pressing the nose wheel button on your stick. Contact the ground crew by pressing T and request to remove the EPU ground safety pin by pressing 1. Press T again and then 2 
to request shocks to be removed. Go back to your lights panel and set your position lights to flash. Set your nose wheel landing lights to taxi. Disengage the parking brake and taxi after requesting instructions to do so by contacting the ground control of the airbase. I will cover taxi and takeoff procedures on a future tutorial. And there we have it. This is the way I normally start up the F-16. This procedure, when practiced often enough, becomes second nature and you can get the aircraft ready to go much faster than what I demonstrated. I hope this tutorial was helpful, thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.